I'm Al Gore. I used to be the next president of the United States of America. Former Vice President Al Gore's emotional film, An Inconvenient Truth, is regarded by many as the definitive popular presentation of the theory of man-made global warming. His argument rests on one all-important piece of evidence taken from ice core surveys in which scientists drill deep into the ice to look back into Earth's climate history hundreds of thousands of years. The first ice core survey took place in Vostok in the Antarctic. What it found, as Al Gore correctly points out, was a clear correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature. We're going back in time now, 650,000 years. Here's what the temperature has been on our Earth. Now, one thing that kind of jumps out at you is, did, did they ever fit together? <laughs> Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The relationship is actually very complicated. But there is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others, and it is this. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Al Gore says the relationship between temperature and CO2 is complicated, but he doesn't say what those complications are. In fact, there was something very important in the ice core data that he failed to mention. Professor Ian Clark is a leading Arctic paleoclimatologist who looks back into the Earth's temperature record tens of millions of years. When we look at uh, climate on long scales, we're looking for geological material that actually records climate. If we're to take an ice sample, for example, we use isotopes to reconstruct temperature, but the atmosphere that's imprisoned in that ice, we liberate, and then we look at the CO2 content. Professor Clark and others have indeed discovered, as Al Gore says, a link between carbon dioxide and temperature. But what Al Gore doesn't say is that the link is the wrong way round. So here we're looking at the ice core record from Vostok, and in the red we see temperature going up from early time to later time at a very key interval when we came out of a glaciation. And we see the temperature going up, and then we see the CO2 coming up. CO2 lags behind that increase. It's got an 800-year lag. So temperature is leading CO2 by 800 years. There have now been several major ice core surveys. Every one of them shows the same thing. The temperature rises or falls, and then, after a few hundred years, carbon dioxide follows. So obviously, carbon dioxide is not the cause of that warming. In fact, we can say that the warming produced the increase in carbon dioxide. CO2 clearly cannot be causing temperature changes. It's a product of temperature. It's following temperature changes. The ice core record goes to the very heart of the problem we have here. They said, if the CO2 increases in the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas, then the temperature will go up. But the ice core record shows exactly the opposite. So the fundamental assumption, the most fundamental assumption of the whole theory of, of climate change due to humans is, is shown to be wrong. The fundamental assumption is that a CO2 increase causes a temperature increase. The difficulty is that that doesn't occur anywhere in, in the record. This is the ice core record with the temperature variation, and then it's plotted against the CO2. And I remember when this first came out in 1991 with Pettit and Jousel and the French researchers, and, and they warned, they said, don't rush to judgment on this. But of course, everybody grabbed it because, they, oh yeah, there it is, the temperature's going up and down, the CO2 is going up and down. So they assumed that the CO2, this was proof it was driving their temperature. Five years later, we discovered is exactly the opposite, that the temperature changes before the CO2. In other words, the most important assumption of their hypothesis is wrong. CO2 rises after the temperature rises. It doesn't precede the the, the warming doesn't cause the warming, it, it occurs because of the warming. It's absolutely clear that uh, in the past, uh, the temperature always went up first before the CO2 went up, every single case. As the atmosphere gets warmer, warm spell develops, 
few hundred years later, then the CO2 builds in that warm air to a higher level. But it's not the other way around where the CO2 builds and that drives the temperature up. It's as the air warms up, it can hold more CO2, so more CO2 stays in the atmosphere. Scientists are increasingly becoming disenchanted and a large number of very high profile physicists have come out, even Nobel Prize winners, and denounced the global warming as the greatest scam in scientific history. And when you trace the history of that research, you find that the very man who started that research, a great scientist named Roger Revelle, that man who put out the first modern paper on CO2 as a global warming element, backed off 10 years later and said, wait a minute, uh, <laughs> we don't find that this is really a significant warming that's going on here. He co-wrote an article uh, for the new science magazine called Cosmos at the time, in which he said, hold on a minute, this global warming thing, this carbon dioxide thing, it's not valid. But in the meantime, he had had no other than Al Gore as a student in one of his classes at Harvard, and Al Gore had picked up on this global warming thing and it became an absolute cornerstone of his life. So there we are, folks, a fallacy, bad science, and the scientists who started it backed off on it.